Amen. It pleases, it pleased Dairos to set over the kingdom and a hundred and twenty princesses like governors. Are you with me? That's what it means, like governors. Which should be over the whole kingdom. Wow, that must be a large kingdom. 120 governors. Wow. Nigeria, how many governors do we have? 36. And over these 120, over these, there will be three presidents. Every president will govern 40, will govern 40. And of whom Daniel was first. May you be first. Follow me. May you be first. That the prince might give account unto them. So all of them bring account. The 120 governors bring the account to the three presidents. Now, the three presidents give the account to one, which is Daniel. Unto them, and the, that the king should have no what damage. So it's a good setup of administration. Wow. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and the princesses. Because an excellent spirit was what? In him. And the king thought to set him above the whole realm. Then the president and the princesses sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find no occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error. Wow, or fault found in him. May that be your testimony. Yeah. <laughs> in verse 5, the last verse, there it says this man, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, this Daniel, except we find him against what? Consigning the law of his God. All right. So I'm preparing you concerning Thursday, because Thursday it will be a bomb. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for this hour. Speak your word to your people. Heal the sick, raise the dead, set the captives free. Do great and mighty works here and glorify your son, Jesus. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. And let the saints of God shout aloud, amen. amen. Please help me go around and welcome everybody to service and tell them you are welcome in Jesus' name. Good to see your face. I love you when you come for Bible studies like this. I like it when you come for Bible studies. Yes. I love it when you come for Bible studies. Thank you, blessed God. Come on. Welcome, everyone. Mandalaba Santa la Catalaba Diana. I love you, Lord. For your never end. All my I Help me sing it. Oh. Hey, I will sing of the goodness of God. Say no more. Seated. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for your life. Some some ministry they remove Bible studies. Amen. So they have service once in a week and then Sunday service. Amen. Because they discover that people don't buy into Bible studies. Amen. But I thank God for your life. We're not taking it off. In fact, we're going to rearrange it and make it more lucrative and more better. You didn't say amen? Amen. All right. Nothing helps your life like 
you know, every day you are adding something to your life, especially in this kingdom. Because if you are not rooted in the word of God, <laughs> you will miss a lot. Amen. I said amen. amen. All right, so I want to share with you something very important, and I know you will like it, what I call surviving hostile environment. What I call it? I can't hear you. What I call it? I didn't hear you now. Say it again. I thought you wrote YX. Say it like someone that go to school. Hey. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, surviving hostile environment. Okay, so let's, let's, let's come back here. Yeah. How many of you understand that topic? Just the topic. How many of you understand it? Surviving hostile environment. How does a child of God, how does a Christian survive a hostile environment? That's what I want to talk to you about. It's very important that you know this. Amen? I said amen. amen. So, what I, let's start by defining what is a hostile environment. You want to write? Write it down. Don't forget, like they told you after service, go to your Facebook, comment, share it. Amen. It doesn't cost you anything. That sharing you share may help somebody. So when we talk about a hostile environment, what we mean? Now, a hostile environment is an environment that is antagonistic, an environment that is disrespectful, an environment where you are being ignored, environment where you are not being appreciated, <laughs> environment that is full of insult. That's what a hostile environment means. An environment that is always, you're always being attacked. Uh, they, they, an environment where they show you open dislike. Like, they don't just say it, they show it to you, they don't like you. An environment where they scandalize your reputation. Or an environment. Such environment can be your place of work. Such environment can be your business centers. Such environment can be in your, you know, compound. Such environment can be your relationship. How do you survive a hostile environment as a child of God? Very important. Because I've seen many people you know, come to my office, oh, I, uh, you know, daddy, I want to resign, I want to leave this place, of I want to do that. They don't like me. And everybody must not like you. You should know that. If you like, you know, be an angel, <laughs> carry white wings with light, everybody must not what, like you. Stop living your life because you want everybody to like you. Those who will like you will always like you. Can I shock you? The devil have people that like him. Hello? Even Satan has people that what? Likes in him. So be yourself. Stop doing things because you need the approval of people. And by the time nobody approves you, somebody go against you, and you're already chicken out of life. Every one of us, as a child of God, we are supposed to have a certain level of understanding on how to live in a hostile environment. How do you live? How do you walk with your boss who is very hostile to you? How do you cope up with it? How do you work with people, your bosses, your colleagues who are hostile to you? How do you live? How do you survive them? How do you work with them? And that is what the Holy Spirit wants me to teach you tonight. Amen? That was what I wanted to teach you last week, Tuesday, that I have to go out and I didn't come on time. You know, so I just said, all right, let me come back. I don't want to miss that because we are talking about taking uh, over. So what, before you take over, you are living in a hostile environment. Remember the story of David? Before David would take over, he was living in a very hostile environment. I, how many of you know that? He was living with a man that wanted to kill him. He was living with an enemy. How do you live with an enemy? <laughs> living with an enemy. There's a movie like that, right? Living with what? An enemy. <laughs> a movie. Somebody who wants to kill you, lives with you in the house. How do you survive it? David, the Bible said David behaved himself wisely, so that is a wise concept. 
on how to lead and survive such environment. That's what I want to share with you. Put your right hand on your chest. Say, Lord, give me understanding. Say again, Lord, give me understanding. All right, so let's, let's look at it together. Okay, let's start with this. We saw the story of Daniel. I've told you, you know, the king had a very big empire. The Babylonian empire was very big. One around 20 princesses, like governors. And these governors, he made them, okay, into three. All right. And in three, he has made three presidents over them. President over 40 each. And among them, again, Daniel was preferred. Daniel was what preferred. And that brings about agitation. That brings about hostility. That brings about castigation, fault finding, disrespect, snobbing. Everything was going against Daniel. Was wow. Resigning was not the option. He has to live up to it. Read your Bible. The Bible says they sought for an occasion. Now, underline the word they sought for an occasion, meaning they were finding fault. They were what? Talk to me, someone. They were what? Finding fault. So, meaning. They were not, it come to a point in their life, they were not hiding their agitation towards Daniel. They were stepping on his toes. They did everything to provoke him. Everything. They did everything to provoke him. Step on his feet, <laughs> insult him, you know, try to, try to, uh, 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 you know, what do you call it? Uh, 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 how do you say when you put something, lie on somebody's head? What's that English language again? Uh, you know, uh, they lay allegation on him. They did that. <laughs> they did that. You know. But, but, you know, look at the whole story. Daniel was calm, very calm, very calculated, until one day they said, look, man, we cannot, we cannot find any fault. As far as Daniel is concerned, what I'm seeing now, you cannot find any fault. Let us now take it against the law of his God. That is Thursday service. They took the battles to spiritual. That is why I say on Thursday, it's going to be a spiritual encounter. Amen? Something in your life will change. I didn't hear your amen. amen. But remember, before they take it spiritual, they were trying everything possible. Had it been Daniel failed in one area or the other, they don't need to take it to the other side. Are you with me? So I want to share with you certain keys that will help you move your way among people who are hostile, environment who are hostile, business place who are hostile, you know, when, when you, you thought when you open business, people are going to flood into your business, all of a sudden they started turning their back at you, you know, people are coming to your place of, to buy something, they stop them and say, don't buy, he's selling fake things, don't buy, he's this and that, giving you all kind of names and, and all and all, that's the world we live in. Something can never stop. Hello? It can never stop. That's the world we live in. People will keep saying what they want to say, doing what they want to do. The question is, you, how do you survive it? How do you survive it? Some people are broken. They break down. And that ends their journey. Some break down and move back. And that's where they fail. You don't need to break down. Come on, tell your neighbor, you don't need to break down. Absolutely. You don't need to break down. Tell your neighbor, you don't need to break down. I'd like you to move to four people and tell them you don't need to break down. Four people. Move around. Yes, move around. Four people tell them you don't need to break down. Survive it. Overcome it. Triumph over it. They are not hearing you. One more, one more, one more again. Move one more person. You don't need to break down. They are not hearing you. Look for someone again. Tell them. You don't need to break down. Survive it. Overcome it. Triumph over it. Put an amen to that. So can we do that? All right. I want you to understand that everybody is created uniquely. Everybody is created what? We don't need to be the same. You are unique in your own sense. I'm unique in my own sense. Amen? Don't try to copy anybody. To do what? Copy anybody. I'm unique in my own sense. You are unique in your own uh, sense. Don't try to copy any, anybody. Glory to God. I say glory to God. All right. Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1. Take us back there to verse 1. Verse 1. 
Number one, in every environment that is hostile, I want you to understand there are bullies. There are what? Bullies. Talk to me now. There are what? Who is a bully? A bully is that individual who feels he's in charge of an environment, who feels that nothing works, nothing should happen without his consent. Are you with me? A bully is someone who tries to exert his, his weight and to force people to respect him. It doesn't end respect, he forces respect. In other words, he tries to bring fear so that he can control. That's a bully. He brings what? Fear so that he can what? control. In every hostile environment, there are bullies. There are what? Bullies. I want you to know. In your office, there are bullies. Your boss can be a bully. Your colleague can be a bully. It will amaze you to know, even in the church environment, there are bullies. <laughs> there are people who are in church, so when you come newly and you are trying to show that you are more spiritual than them, they say, okay, you are. I'm going to show you where you come from. Don't try that here. We are the Methuselah of this church. The Methuselah here. We've been here before you. Don't, don't try that. <laughs> don't try that. When you come, sir, when you come, I dare here when you come. I dare here when you come. No try that thing. There are bullies in every environment. There are what bullies. Now, even in your relationship, your relationship, whatever the kind of relationship you are into, please pay attention. Don't let anything distract you. Either marital relationship or your dating relationship. If you are not careful, you discover that one of your spouse can be a bully. The husband can be a bully. And he tried to bully you, tried to force himself. You got up to respect what to put fear in you. There is no love in fear. There's no love what? In fear. Love in fear. <laughs> when, when your spouse begins to fear you and not love you, there's a problem. That's a problem. So there are bullies. Get this very well. There are what? Bullies. Now the question is: why are people bullying? That is where the problem is. Until you understand the reason for people who are, who are bullies, you can't be able to handle them. Now, every expression of bullying is, is a sign of being intimidated. They are being intimidated by your appearance, by your personality. Bullies are being intimidated. It's not because they discover that you are a soft spot, there is something about you that is making them feel uncomfortable. So they react. They react. Many of you say, we did here. We did here, so they react. They react. That is why I discovered that bullies, they look for sub-target to show they are bullish, they, to show their strength. So their strength. How do we know this? An excellent spirit was in Daniel, underline the word, an excellent spirit. And the king thought to set him above all, meaning there was something peculiar about him. So that produced agitation and hostility among the people. Uh, Daniel is not even from this land. Daniel is not part of us. Daniel is a Babylonian. Remember, they were four in number. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We have succeeded in pushing these guys. Why not Daniel? Why not Daniel? They are bullies. So how do you, everybody hear this now, how do you survive a hostile environment. Number one is to stand up to the bully. Goliath was a bully. And as long as nobody stands up to face Goliath, Goliath will keep raining terror, keep raining fear in that environment. So what do you do? Stand up. Face your fears. Face what? I'm talking to you now. Face your what? Fear. Are you with me here? Face your fear. Face your fear. You know, some landlords are, are bullies. Who park car here? He doesn't have car, but nobody should park here. Landlord doesn't have car, but is nobody should park here. Who park this car here? Who park this car? Move the car back. Move the car back. Why will you park here? Okay. Now, nah, parking space. Uh -huh. Who go park there? High tech on you. No park there. He's, he's intimidated. Your success is, is fighting him. Something is. So, what do you do? You don't become a slave forever. Stand up for it. You have one life to live. The peace of your mind matters. Hello? 
Stand up for it. What I say you do? Stand up for it. Stand up for it. A young man was living in a compound and uh, the landlord won't let him rest. Hey, lower your music. The guy stopped playing music. Hey, do this. You can't wash toilet oil. You have to buy every soap. Okay, I'll go buy all the whole soap they go use. I mean, I mean, they buy everything. Every now and then. So he came to my office crying. How can a young man like you be crying? He said, this man is an old man. And I don't know. I said, face it. The highest this man can ever do is to give you what? Quit what? Notice. And then what do you do? Quit. Something in him jump up. Anywhere this boy is, 8.30, 9 o'clock, the landlord will uh, uh, close the door. I told next time when he closed the door, break him. Break him. Break him. Don't fear. Landlord is not God. It's not what? Are you not paying your rent? Now free of charge? Now talk, oh, talk to me. See, some of you are even afraid. Don't be your landlord. Don't be able to talk to me. I can see fear in your head. <laughs> So some people already are, they already are afraid. <laughs> What's daddy telling me? That's why I'm telling you, you need to survive this environment. You, see, you can't live your life like a slave. You stand up. Face it. The young man went back home. The week following, the landlord came with his threat. He turned the landlord and said, oh God, they respect you. No triumph again. No. The man said, what? I said, no triumph. No triumph. No triumph again. Don't. Don't do that. The man was surprised. Don't do that. I can come back to the house anytime. In fact, let us put padlock. Everybody has a key, huh? uh, Let us put key. So that they can share the key for what? Everybody. Anytime I come, let me use my key and open and enter. Don't, don't, stop treating me as if I'm not, a, I'm not paying your rent here. Hey, I will give you quick notice. You see, I've been waiting for it. Till today, the man didn't give me quick notice. Till today, as I'm talking to you, the man never gave him. And guess what? The boy had his freedom. The landlord was even calling him landlord. Say, now you be landlord now. Now you be landlord now. Because he stood his ground. That's what, he stood what? His ground. When you don't stand against bully, you become slave forever. There are certain situations in your life, they are bully. Some sickness are bully. Poverty is a bully. Stand against it. I'm talking to someone here. I mean, every now and then, failure, you are trying something, failure will show up and make you to fail. That, the thing don't come again. You fail. Hey, small time again, it don't come again. Enough! He said, no, stand against it. I'm talking to someone here. Stand what? Stand what? Stand against it. No devil anywhere. You have one life to live. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every now and then, the same sickness. You want to enjoy life, the same sickness. Enough is enough. Stand against it. What does not kill you make you strong? Are you with me here? What does not kill you make you what? Every, every now and then, uh, you know, this. Uh, uh, if, I, I, will marry, I will marry you again. I will marry you. Enough is enough. No marry. We have been dating for 12 years. You didn't talk about marriage this morning. And I, well, if you didn't marry me all these 12 years, now this issue, well, you know what married me from the beginning. Enough is enough. Where are they go? Watch how they go. go. Are they go? Are they go? Are they go? They look back. You don't call hey, So you won't come. Hey, so there is somebody. Yes, there is somebody. Go, there is somebody. <laughs> enough is enough. I cause every element of slavery out of your life. <laughs> Let's survive it. Let's what? Let's survive, let's overcome it. Enough is enough. Are you with me here? Enough is enough. You know, one day, you know, <laughs> one of my neighbors, every now and then, they must push the car. They must push the car. One day I call him, I said, by force. Now by force. All of us with that car, we are even enjoying our life than you with the car. In by force. He throw this thing away. He looked at me. As I'm telling you, throw this thing away. When better motor come, better motor come. This one is no wahala. But by the time you push, when the car will do boom like this, they smoke. One day somebody they think smoke on the person's person. And the person was passing by. When I saw the way the person stopped, in his mind he said, Which devil asked me to make I help this man? <laughs> enough is enough. Glory to God. I'm asking somebody here. I, I'm talking to somebody's gonna make it after tonight. Amen. Let me hear that amen where. So the first thing is to stand up against bully. There are some people who are like elephant. They will not come off a road and they will not allow you to move. They want to intimidate you. Don't let them intimidate you. Don't let nobody what intimidate you. Don't let them do that. In the book of the, uh, uh, Ephesians, he said, let no man despise their youth. Let no man despise it. Uh -uh. Don't let anybody despise it. Don't let anybody look down on you. Don't let anybody. So stand up against them. That's what Daniel did. 
You know what Job said to his people? He said, I'm not inferior. I am not what? Inferior. I'm not inferior. It's a new day in your life. I didn't hear your amen. Uh, we are, you know, at the airport, and then, uh, you know, and then one, one woman just came because she's an immigration officer. Hey, all of you come this way. I stood, I was looking at her. You know me now? Huh? All of you come this way with my international passport. I'm traveling abroad. This one is all of you come. This way. I refuse to move. He said, Hey, you, would you come? I didn't answer her. I refuse. I refuse. She come to me and I said, don't you, don't you have respect? Don't you have respect? All of you come here. You refer to all of you come here. If my protocols are here, my surveillance are here, you think they will hear you? I said, not only me, everybody here, they deserve your apology. You need to come and give us and talk, and talk to us like people who are traveling abroad. All of you come here. You, won't you come? You, 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 making me... If not for anything, I, will have, I won't have traveled and just go back home now. The woman's body became cold. Standing up to them. I'm sorry, sir. Say, not me. Everybody here. Everybody here. That was when the eyes of everybody began to open. Say, oh, God. They didn't tell me. The way the woman, the commander, say, no, no talk now. When I talk now, they talk now. No, no, no talk now. No talk now. Amen. I said, Amen. You, you stop, stop allowing people push you, push, 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 push. At this age in life, oh uh, no, or at this level of life, when your eyes are open, in this digital age, you get away from somebody pushing you, you go look at them and say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Like, uh, you know, we line up to buy fuel, buy fuel, to buy fuel, and then uh, the man go, lock the gate, lock the gate. I say, I say for who? Who did they shout for? The way you have this company, I will soon get my own. It's already coming very soon. And I will not shout to people like that. The guy was confused. Lock gate, lock. For what? For what? As if we are here to collect life. Oh yeah, lock the gate. Lock the gate. You come lock the gate. They said I didn't get the station. You come lock the gate. You get the station. Come and lock the gate. Come and lock the gate. <laughs> if you see where I'm reacting certain times, eh, you will know that I hate being bullied. Receive that grace now. I say receive that grace now. That's what makes you a child of God. If you survive this moment, don't you allow yourself to be what? Bullied. It's a new day in your life. Number two. Are you here? Number two. Number two. Be connected to the highest authority. Be what? To the what? Be connected to where? Yeah, now we saw where the Bible says that uh, the king thought of what? Making Daniel what? To set Daniel above the entire what? Realm. To set Daniel where? Above the entire what? Realm. Are you with me? To set Daniel where? There is something about being connected to the highest authority. Wherever you are, wherever you live, make sure that you have a connection with the highest what, authority in that environment, in your place of work. Are you with me? I'm giving you wisdom. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right, man of God, what about if I am working with my boss and my boss is the, is the bully type and my boss is, my, is the hostile environment? Now, who do I get connected to? Got connected to God. <laughs> God becomes the highest authority because the heart of every man is the hands of who? The king. Heart of, the heart of the king is the hand of who? God. And he channels it like channel for what? Water. So you get connected to the highest authority. If your boss is the highest authority, then get connected to God. There is a reason why. There's a reason why. It's very important. If you study that scripture, you discover that the king and Daniel have personal relationship. Has what? Personal relationship. And that is why when you are in your place of work, yes, learn to have personal relationship with your superiors. With your what? Superiors in the place of work. And any given chance you have to, you know, uh, meet other superiors who are more superior than your superior, please take advantage of it. Hello? Take what? Advantage of it. I'm telling you, it helps. 
It helps. It helps. I walked before, <laughs> you know, and uh, I discovered that most times you discover that there are certain people that will go to the bus and carry fake news about you, two of us, and lied on your head. Now, if you don't have a personal relationship with your boss, they could spoil your record. Even at that, they could be able to strain your relationship with your boss, but give it time. Your record will speak for you. Give it time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is why it's not good to walk in an environment and be distanced from your, you know, uh, when I mean distant, meaning you stay away when you have an opportunity to have a relationship with your bosses. And then you stay away. It's very dangerous. People can use that against you in your place of work and scandalize you and create enmity between you and your boss. And if your boss is the one, then make sure you have a personal relationship with God. It will help you. It will help you. There is a testimony. A young man was here. Mary, Fat Mary brought him here. Not a young man. He's, yeah, he's a man. And uh, he's, he's been looking for a job. He had a job and he lost his job. He's been looking for a job. And they've gone for, uh, you know, they've gone to uh, uh, do a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 they've gone for, uh, 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 what do you call it? Interview. And they were 20. And they've called almost 15. Nobody called him. And in the interview, he was the third best performing guy. Third, according to him. And nobody called him. In fact, people were telling congratulations, but nobody called him. Till the 15th person, nobody called him. So I don't know where Mary, uh, Mary Usher, the fat Mary, saw him, and then she told me there's this man. And then he came here, and then uh, we engaged in prayers and uh, stuff like that. You know. So we prayed together, and uh, I gave him, I told him where the problem is. And I told him they would call him. He gave me the name of the people, and I prayed, and they called him. I told you, say amen. <laughs> They call him. He, was, he, he called me. He was so excited. They call him. But the problem he has now, he's telling me that it, there's this personal grievance between him and the HR. It's a personal, you know, you, you have never met him before. But the man told him, say, apart from him, if he's the one, he will not call him. He should go and thank uh, his God. How will he be able to, the, this other person call him? He's not the, he will never call him. Very hostile. So I told him, I said, in this case, what you needed to do, there's a certain prayer you pray that God will soften the heart of your boss. That's why I say get connected to the highest authority so that the heart of your boss may come down. And if you have another authority, get connected to them so that when somebody will come and lie to them, they will have a personal record. Already they have your personal what record with you. They have your personal record. There are certain people in this church, when people come to tell me certain things about them, I laugh and I tell them no. And they felt, oh, he won't believe me because he's this person. Oh, he won't believe me because he's that person. No, I know every one of you here. Even some of you thought there is no personal relationship between me and you. There is. There is. There are things they will say about you, and I will come attacking you. There are things they will say about you, and I will never come. <laughs> because I know it's far from me. It is not you. The only thing I can do is to caution you. If you are going to that way, don't go that way again because of you are monitoring you. That's why it is good to have that. Even when the devil, the Bible said the devil is the accuser of the brethren. There are things the devil will go and accuse you before God. God will say, leave him. Don't. You cannot accuse him of that. Am I talking to somebody here? So it's good to be connected to the highest uh, authority. Look at it. David was connected to Saul. Saul was his boss. Saul wanted to kill him. But guess what? The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. The Lord was the one ordering the step of what? David. He told David, bend down. When David bent down, what happened? The spear passes by was able to escape it. It's not because David was smart to escape it. God was ordering his step. And the same thing. The same thing when you get connected to God, have a personal relationship with God, he will direct your feet. He will direct your affair. He will tell you when to bend down, when to stand straight, when to lay low. Am I talking to somebody here? That's very important. Number three now, before we pray. Am I a blessing to you? How to survive hostile environment. Number three, which is very important, separate yourself from negativism. It's very important. The reason why the environment is hostile is to create in you negativism. The purpose of a hostile environment, everybody here now, is to create in you negativism. It's to create negative energy inside of you. It's to make you feel bitter. It's to make you feel sorrowful. It's for you to reserve to self-pity. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, it says, guide your heart 
with all diligence, for out of it flow the what? Issues of life. What are you guiding your heart against? Negativism is one of them. Negativism. Because they know if they succeed, everybody hear this now, please watch this now. If they succeed in creating negative uh, uh, energy inside of you, you will definitely react based on that negativism. And anybody who reacts based on negativism is bound to make mistakes. Bound to make mistakes. For example, Moses was, was leading in a hostile environment. The leader, the Israelites were being hostile to him. They were fighting him. They were, they were all agitating. Oh, give us water, give us water. You call yourself a man of God. Baba, you can't, come on water, you can't give us. Uh, they've all forgotten the miracles that happened. Out of pressure, he allowed their negative energy to enter him. And the Lord said to Moses, when you go before the people, speak to the rock to bring forth water. But Moses was so engrossed by that negativism. He looked at people talking to him anyhow. So he was angry. He went to the rock and smite the rock how many times? Three times. And water gushed out. And the people started hailing him. But God said, you miss it. That was where Moses ended his journey. He reacted instead of respond. They expect you to react because of the agitation. They are very antagonistic to you. They expect you to react. So you don't react. I'm not talking to somebody here. You respond. You don't react, you respond. What's the difference between reacting and responding? Reacting is negative. Respond is positive. They expect you to bounce back. They expect you to start being insultive like them. They expect you to keep malice like them. They expect you to withdraw because of your service. They, are, they see that your service is uh, attacking them. It's not making them to shine. So they, they fight you so that you can withdraw from your place of service so they can take over. And you are reacting the way the devil wants you to react. They want you to, to, to in the compound, they, they fight you so that you will, you, you will start living your life. Stop living your life. You know. And then by the time you stop living your life, hey, they are happy. So that anytime they are coming now, you, 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 you become like a chicken and they move like a lion that they are. You will see them moving up and down in the compound, they are enjoying. And then you, you are looking like a beggar. In the compound, you are paying rent. In the same company, you're paying rent. Oh, man, I, I, I feel like knocking your head. That's, 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 that's terribly bad. Nobody should make you feel inferior in your company. Nobody should make you feel intimidated in your company. The company, you're paying rent? Come on now, you're paying rent. It's a new day in your life. I didn't hear your amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. You've got to understand certain basics about you, about your life, about the things that surround you. Stop living your life as if you're begging for anything. Hello? Stop living your life. I see you're what? Begging for anything. You're not begging for it. It's your life. God has given it to you. Hello? Stand on it. Are you with me here? And don't allow their negative, I mean, their, their you know, antagonistic, their, the hostility of the environment to create negative energy in you. Don't let it. Maintain your positive energy. Maintain it. And instead of reacting, do what? Respond. Take your time. That was what, uh, 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 you know, Daniel did. You know, by Thursday, we're going to understand when they came on Daniel, they caught him. Daniel did not fight back. Did he fight back? <laughs> he didn't fight back. Daniel was calm and calculated. He was composed, smiling. They were looking at Daniel. He didn't say anything. Read your Bible. They took him before the king. They showed him everything they signed. They took him to the lions there. He didn't say anything. He was quiet. There are times to talk. There are times not to talk. It's time to be quiet. He, he was just responding, not reacting. He was responding, not reacting. You've come to, you need to come to a level where you've got to learn to what? Respond and not what? React. That's what they wanted you to react. To fight back. To be insulting. To be moody. Aha! You don't see, I say, you don't laugh today for church. I tell you, say that thing, you enter up. You enter up. You don't be laugh. <laughs> Even when we did dance, you don't say that before. If they dance, you just dance anyhow. Now, watch out. You know, if you dance again, you know, if you dance, we don't cut. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. I don't tell you. Watch out. I know how to deal with them. I don't take for this church. You can't come, come, they do us anything. We go show up. If I catch you, eh? <laughs> I will show you I'm the boss here. <laughs> Amen. Is somebody blessed at all? So learn to respond, not, not react. That's what they want you to. Energy. Guide your heart. Guide your heart. They will do everything. In fact, they will say anything. In, they will even text you messages. They may even call you. They block their line and call you and insult you, this kind of a thing. You don't need to. Don't buy into it. Don't what? Buy into it. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into it. 
so there was this uh, lady that was having a relationship with this young man. And so the young man disappointed the lady. They were in the same church. And so the young man formed a clique and, uh, in the church. So anytime the lady is coming, you see them laughing. They will be laughing, you know. So if, if, if they are laughing now, it makes the girl feel bad. It makes her feel bad. So she's not happy. Why is this person? And, you know, so she wanted to, you know, leave the church. And then somebody called me, gave me a number. And then she called me and said, and I said to her, I said, no. And I said, it's a, it's a transfer of energy. It's a transfer of what? Energy. He has succeeded in transferring the energy on you. And so he's watching your body language, watching everything. So they are enjoying the way you are reacting. And I said, okay, beat them to their game. Come on. Beat them to their what? Yeah. Instead of reacting, respond. Instead of reacting, what? Respond. Stop going to the church anyhow. Package yourself very well. Put on some perfume. Put on a smiling face. And if you are going to church, call certain people by their name and greet them. Call certain people by their name and do what? Greet them. Ah, Brother Kule, how are you doing? Brother Gabriel, how are you doing? Just do that. Then call me after service. <laughs> Don't let me be your counselor. <laughs> Don't let me be your counselor. So she came to church that very day, and then right from the door, she was looking best, looking lively. And then when the boys were about to laugh, oh, Brother Kule, how are you doing? Brother Gabriel, how is everything? You know, all of them paused. She beat them to their game. They couldn't go further with their cla laughing. And then she was the one that laughed majestically, passed them, entered, and she enjoyed her service that day. She was at their best. She has succeeded in transferring the world energy back to them. <laughs> okay. Before service we end, she has called me. Man of God, it works. I say to keep working. Keep the vibe on. Keep the vibe on. And I said to her, you know what you'll do? The next service, don't go alone. Go and borrow Gabriel to go with you. When you and Gabriel will come enter church. Wherever Gabriel is, tell him to wait for you in front of the church. So by the time she, by the time she dropped now, hold Gabriel in hand and two of them begin to enter church. <laughs> Those boys don't keep talking again. <laughs> Transfer the energy. Yeah, that's what they now you, they just touch Martin now. You know, they, you, you don't scatter. You do come church, you do confuse. See door to enter church, so you can't stand for church, they look. <laughs> you don't confuse. They have transferred this energy in you, so they, it is only God that is helping you. I, 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 I deliver you now. <laughs> praise God. I say praise God. I'm telling you, it's all about, uh, what do you call it? It's all about energy transfer. It's all about energy what? transfer, that negative energy, you know. You become bitter. You, you become resentful. You start withdrawing yourself. And the devil is happy. Your enemies are happy. Your haters are happy. Because you are not living your life to fulfillment. You don't live your life to fulfillment. You know, there was a wedding. A man came here and said, my daughter is wedding, and he invited me, and I have to go. And I know when I go, I'm going to meet my critics. All my critics were there. All of them were there. So that day I dressed with Agbada, you know. Uh, I got some protocols and uh, some surveillance. They went there and waited for me down at uh, Weather Head. And, no, no Weather Head, Egbe Road. So I went there with my Agbada, entered inside. They were all there. And I didn't even know where I turned down. Was. When I turned around, we were all there. This one was there, this one was there. So I just stayed quiet. Wahala. <laughs> they were looking at me one guy. <laughs> they give the other person a microphone. The first thing the person in the microphone was talking. He was just saying something indirectly on me. The guy that sat on my side said, Are you did talk to? I said, I know. <laughs> now me bring myself, come. I said, I know. And then suddenly I kept quiet. And then they give people, and when you enter, they carry your name and they write. They didn't give me any name. I didn't write any name. So they now said, I don't know what they came out and said, uh, We want to introduce some people there. I was sitting down there. They call this one, they clap. They call this one, they clap. They call this one, they clap. They call. I didn't know who gave my name. And then the last one, ladies and gentlemen, the youngest bishop, before he shout David George, the whole place, <laughs> Rohit was there. Even the girl that was doing wedding, when she was right, hey, David George was there because I, I never knew she was the one that told the father, David George was come from my wedding. So all of them, were, so the people that were there, <laughs> Their face was not clear. <laughs> you know what I did? I, I, I said, can I go ease myself? They say, they say this way. As soon as I step and I tell my boy, say, <laughs> now go meet me for a big road. So before they will finish everything, <laughs> before they transfer the negative energy, energy, I don't transfer that to them. I move up. 
and I came home, I drink water, and I sleep fine. The reason why you can't sleep fine is because of too much energy, negative one. He just said, walking for bed. See, as he did for bed. You had your baby. <laughs> too much energy. Be delivered now. <laughs> I, know, I know you won't like me, but no problem. I know you won't like me, but no problem. Amen. I just have to do deliverance for you now. Amen. Praise God. Number what now? All right, number, number four now. Number four. Engage in personal development. Very important. In your place of work, very important. See about Daniel. He was preferred, not by mistake. They couldn't find any error on Daniel. You know why? Because the, when they were all happy, they got a job. Daniel see their job as an opportunity to develop what? Himself. All of us are employed at the same level. But guess what? Give attention to yourself. Develop yourself. You will naturally step out from that level. You will be ahead of others. When you don't develop yourself, you remain with them or they go ahead of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Develop yourself. Tell your boss, okay, I did school now. I did run some courses now. He said, hey, he said, I hope you don't affect my job. No, sir. I just want to learn something that will add to it. When you finish, come show on the certificate. Come show who? So that you can not say, the certificate when you tell employ you, don't fail. This one, they need to upgrade you. By, by the time you do that, then demand for some extra responsibility. You will discover that naturally you are going to go above others. Engage in personal development. Instead of sitting down and be complaining about your place of work, engage in personal development. Engage. Uh, maybe during break time, all of them will go and sit down and be discussing. During break time, carry your dictionary, go and sit down and be reading. Carry your other materials, go and be studying. That's how you do it. Change your focus. Give attention to yourself. Add more skills. Acquire skills. Develop other skills that will enhance your production in that place of work. I'm not talking to somebody here. Very important. That is how you survive your, your, your what do you call it, a hostile environment. But by the time you sit down, you're complaining, this person don't like me. They will never like you. Hello? Even when you share money, they will collect the money and never what? Like you. So what do you do? Pay attention to yourself. Develop yourself. Read books. Read books. Bring these tapes. Play them. Be listening to them. Develop yourself. Play some music in your ears. Learn some new music. Write it down. Compose your own music. Write it up. Just get yourself busy. Forget about these people by your side. Hello? Are you with me here? Follow me. If it's in your compound, bring your chairs out and start cleaning them. Bring them all out. Start dusting them. Clean them one by one. They arrange them. Change the direction. The direction of your room, they know, say, your television bend. Go change them. Put them where they know, go, know say, bend. You put them where? Very well. Arrange your house. Be, a, be busy doing that. Am I blessing to someone here? It will help you. you know, develop yourself, both spiritually and, uh, and, and otherwise. And then the last one, then we, we pray. Amen? Then I can minister to that man there. Amen. Just relax yourself. I'm coming to minister to you. But if you're in a hurry, you can leave. But uh, if you need my attention, just relax. I'll minister to you. Amen. The last one. Number one, I say what? Standing up to what? Bullies. Number two, what? Be connected to the highest what? authority. Number three, be separated from negativism. Number four, engage in personal development. And then number five, be spiritual. This is very important. Be what? Spiritual. Be what? Talk to me now. The Bible says in the book of Romans, it says to be carnally minded is what? Dead. To be spiritually minded is peace. Be spiritual. Now, what is it like to be spiritual? Does being spiritual simply means you need to wear certain clothes and begin to walk like a winch along the road? Hey, I'm a spiritual person. No, sir. What is it like to be spiritual? Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So to be spiritual simply means to live by the spirit world. To live by what? The spirit world. When you live by the spirit world, you are spiritual. What is the spirit world? The Bible. The word of God is spirit. The word of God is spirit. So by the time you are living and, and, and acting based on the word of God, you are spiritual. My Bible didn't tell me this. My Bible didn't say this. This is how my Bible says. Let people see that you are not just a, a talking Bible, you are a walking Bible. Come on now. Are you with me here? You are not just a talking Bible, you are also what? A walking Bible. You don't just only talk the talk, you walk the talk. The things the word of God says, that's what you, you walk. That's what you do. I'm actually somebody here. That is how to be spiritual. 
That's how to be spiritual. You engage in personal meditation of the word. You engage in studying the word. You engage in prayer and fasting. People in your office, you know that you are a spiritual person. No, be every now and then they bring food. Now you they chop. I go chop that food though on Monday. I go chop that food on t- so that they know say you go chop. So they keep your own personally. One day they go put or more inside. Daddy, my belly they pay me. He say, ah, you don't chop. You don't chop. <laughs> Come and do deliverance. That's why you eat in the night. You know if you pray. You got to learn to develop your prayer life. Why do I need to be spiritual in my place of work? Because everybody help me now. It's very important. The, the world we live now is very dangerous. Not everybody you see laugh with you that actually love you. Hello? The thing is that if God opens your eyes to know that there are certain people, if they have their time, their chances in that place of work, they will do away with you, it will shock you. So your spiritual capacity matters. I'm going to deal with that on Thursday. Your spiritual capacity matters. How strong you are spiritually matters. Because if you are not spiritually strong, they can save we. They break you down. Break you down. I've seen people uh, 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 rush out of exam hall because they run mad. I've seen people rush out of place of work because they run mad. I've seen people, so many things happen to people in their places of work. In their compound too. Why? Because someone somewhere is fighting them spiritually. Be delivered now. I said be delivered now. And that is why you have to be spiritual. To be spiritual simply means you live according to the word of God. You live according to the word of God. You pray the word. You do the fasting. These are things that help you to be spiritual. Hello? That's things that help you to be spiritual. Engage in personal fasting. Do your fasting and prayer. Engage in it. Pray on it. Choose the days within the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Pick one day for your personal prayer and fasting. From morning till 12, from morning till 1, from morning till 2. Engage that until one day you are able to do, until a day comes that every one day in, your, in a week is given to the Lord. You spend your time to pray. You spend your time in your indoors. You spend hours to pray. You come to the church. We should be able to know, ah, every, no, this person, he will come. Today is Friday. This person must come. He always doesn't miss altar prayer in the church by Friday. So, so, and so time. Develop it. Come around, engage in your prayer. Shanta balakata. Pray for your well-being. Pray for your family. Pray for your business. This is how you make yourself strong. This is how you make your spiritual life strong. The Lord bless you here tonight. So that nobody can take advantage of you in that place of work. Because when you are spiritually sensitive, you will know where to put your feet and where not to put your feet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are spiritually sensitive, you know what to say and what not to say. Are you catching what I'm talking about? And before you know it, the Bible says, no weapon formed against me that shall ever what, prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I what, condemn. I've been in that shoe before. I've seen people try to condemn me before my, my director, but before they open their mouth, she will tell them, no, not the DV judge, I know. Not the DV. Even today, sir, I received a call from one of my old students. Old student. Student. I have, to, I have to go to their place today, to go and bless their, their place today. Just in a few minutes. I was really touched when I went there and I saw their situation. Really touched. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell, you need to be what? Spiritual. If you must survive a hostile environment, then your spiritual sensitivity must be very, very high. Bad on your head as we pray. I don't know the, the, the hostile environment that you are in. There is victory for you. You will survive it. You will triumph over it. Lord, the grace. The grace, O oh Lord. The grace. The grace, O oh Lord. To overcome this very situation. The grace, O oh Lord. Are you praying that prayer? Shantala Badoska. Embrekete Balianda La Bazia. Maranda Sekete Barata. Brekoto Bali Brekete Abada. Mando Sia Tabala. Embrekete Balianda La Bazia De. Embredozo. I am speaking to your mind. What is that bully in your spirit? What is that image? What is that voice telling you that you cannot be anything, making you to be slave? Lord, I silence that voice. Lord, I break that powers. That Goliath, Goliath, you are coming down now. Mashata kataya kalabadayada. Enonto sokoto balibregedea. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Let the sense of God shout aloud, Amen. Put those hands together for Jesus.